Hey, what is up everyone? It's Caleb from Caleb the Video Maker 2 and welcome back to your SQL Server tutorial series. This video we are going to prefix the next three or so videos. That's because the next three videos go into a new topic and I don't know where to piece all this information in and I don't really want to bombard you with a ton of information in those videos. So I thought it was necessary to pull out some information and just kind of make a foundation for the next few videos. So this video, we are going to introduce the topic of database normalization. Anytime you study databases, you will come across the term normalization. Guarantee it. It's basically this process that is used to improve the database structure. Think of like this x-ray that like scans your database and is like wrong, 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 and points out all the bad things and helps you fix it. Now obviously this isn't automated, although that'd be pretty cool. It's something we do. So we look at our database with our normalization glasses and scan for different rules. And when we find one of these rules that are broken, we fix it. It's a pretty simple concept, but it's kind of complex and complicated. So I'm gonna try and keep it as simple as possible. That's because whenever you study this stuff online and you look up a definition, they'll give you like 40 different terms that you've probably never heard of. And even I am like, what? So that being said, <laughs> this is going to be a pretty simple introduction to database normalization. Then maybe later down the road, we can go into a little bit more detail with all of the functional dependencies and fancy terms and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> but I will try to give you as many terms as possible. So don't think this is gonna be like baby level. This will be like entry to mid level. All right, so let's do this. As everything is in databases, normalization is broken up into sections. <laughs> Basically, we have these steps we take. So we scan our database and we find everything that's wrong with it. And then we're like, awesome, we got past stage one. And then we do it again. And we find even more errors. And we do this as many times as we want until we get through all of the different normal forms. Normal forms, by the way, are what the steps are called. How many normal forms are there, though? Well, there is actually a lot of normal forms, but we, as beginner noobs, we are going to focus on first normal form, second normal form, and third normal form. And these are abbreviated as 1NF, 2NF, and 3NF. Consider these our x-ray goggles that scan our database. And each level is progressively more strict. So the first one might scan it and say, oh yeah, here's a couple things wrong, but it's, you know, it's not a huge deal. We'll just get rid of those. But then the second one, it also has to pass all of the first normal form rules too, and additional rules. So this one is like, oh no, there's a lot of more errors. We gotta get rid of those. And by the time you get to third normal form, you have to have both first normal form, second normal form done. And then we scan our database and we get more things wrong with our database than things right with our database. <laughs> when we study this stuff, the concept of dependencies will come up. Now, what is a dependency? Essentially, a dependency is when a thing, <laughs> oh, this is totally not helpful, but a thing depends on something else. And the simplest way I can explain that is using the idea of entities and attributes. And this goes back to way the beginning of the series. So if you don't know that, make sure you start from the beginning of the series. But essentially an entity is anything we want to store data about and an attribute is the data we store about the entity. So we kind of get this little diagram. So each one of these would be something describing this entity. You could, however, word it that the attribute depends on the entity. And this would be a dependency. Now there are numerous kinds of dependencies. Some are appropriate and some are not, but we will go over a couple but just so you know, when you study normalization, they're going to talk about all kinds of different dependencies. And when you hear that term, I want you to think of an attribute describing an entity, or essentially a column inside of a table. So if we have a user's table, one column might be the username. I always make it way too small. Let's try this again. Boom. Okay, there we go. Now this username depends on the user. That's because if we changed the user, the username would also change. So to think about that, we can draw some users. <laughs> oh, still I'm bad at drawing. Here's a user, and here's a user. And each one of these users might have a username. So the value of username 
changes based on the user that we're talking about. That is an example of a dependency. Now going beyond third normal form, there's voice cod normal form, fourth normal form, fifth normal form, blah 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 normal form, and yada yada normal form, and just a bunch of other things. But once you get to third normal form, you can basically consider your database to be normalized. Normalized is a state where all of the normal forms have been done on our database and we fix all of the problems. This is obviously something that is subjective. That's because some people would consider third normal form to be normalized, or other people think you have to go farther down. And it really just depends on the application. I personally think third normal form is suitable for 99% of applications, so there's really not a huge reason to go past that, but occasionally there is, so it still might benefit you learning the other normal forms. Now, all of this is designed to help us get data integrity. And I know we've had like a crap ton of videos over data integrity, and you're probably sick of hearing that term. <laughs> but as I said, it's very, very important in our database. If you go through the normal forms, you can basically assure yourself that your data has integrity. How exactly does this help our data integrity? It helps it by preventing anomalies. An anomaly is something out of the ordinary. There are different types of anomalies, such as insert anomalies and update anomalies and delete anomalies. But if you had to summarize it all, Essentially, when you do something with your database, it does something that is not expected. And that stems from our data not having proper integrity. So if we can get rid of anomalies, then we can protect our data. How do we get rid of anomalies? By reducing redundancy. What is redundancy? Redundancy is when we have the same information in our database two times or more. You can think of if we had a user table, and let's say we have username, name, and phone. And when we insert data into this, we give a username, we give it a name, and a phone number. And now let's say we want to add a second phone number. Well, let's just add another row. And in this situation, we have data redundancy. That's because we have this username in here twice, and we have this name in here twice. Now, if these were foreign keys and they pointed back to one entity, that would be okay. But in this situation, it's not okay because we have the same data repeating and if we were to try to update this data, let's say Caleb got a name change. Well, now we go and say, oh, let's grab this row and update it to something else. So instead of Caleb, we're going to have John here. This is a perfect example of an anomaly. That's because now we have John and Caleb in here, and they're both the same person. So is this guy's name Caleb or John? I don't know. And there's no real good way to find out. So we do not want anomalies ever. When you study normalization, you're going to come across different terms such as candidate key. And there are a few others. Essentially what a candidate key is, is a combination of columns, or just a column, that can uniquely identify a row. So basically we're going to have numerous candidate keys, and then we have to pick which one is going to be the most best primary key. So let's say this one's the best. We could say, oh, this is our new primary key. When you go through these normal forms, it's going to be talking about all of the candidate keys. Now candidate keys come in more commonly when we're using natural keys, which have real world meaning. That's because we have to find a good combination of columns to force something to be unique. But when we're using surrogate keys, we almost always just have an ID column. And if that's the situation, we only have one primary key. And because of that, I almost ignore the candidate key. Now, it's probably not like the world's best practice, but you know, it works. <laughs> as long as we have a primary key that's unique, not null, and never changing, I don't see a huge reason in freaking out about all of the different candidate keys and all of that stuff. That means in the upcoming videos, I'm going to be talking about first normal form, second normal form, and third normal form relating to the primary key. I think that's an appropriate way to start database normalization, especially when we're using surrogate keys which have IDs. Let me know what you guys think. Do you think it's a huge deal to focus on all of the candidate keys? I guess it might be more helpful to go through the videos over the normal forms and then come back and let me know what you think. But people have different attitudes and different thoughts on all of this information. 
So hopefully all of that information was a good foundation for the next three or four videos. That way when you go in there, you're not gonna be completely lost and I'm not gonna have to do a 12 minute intro to first normal form. <laughs> if you guys like this video, give me a comment, let me know you liked it. Be sure to click like, and as always, be sure to support this channel by clicking subscribe. That helps me out and it helps you out because now you'll get all of my new videos in your subscription feed. That is all guys, so I will see you in the next video.